You're welcome back. We're glad to know you're still there. It's the breakfast on Plus TV Africa. And right now we're looking at the fact that Nigerians are groaning as higher fuel prices shrink incomes and worsen poverty. And to help us talk with, uh, about that is Mr. Shegun Shokweton, principal partner, Woodridge and Scott. And he's here in the capacity of a uh, public affairs analyst. Good morning and welcome to the program, sir. Good morning. Good morning, Nigerians. I do hope you slept well. I'm asking you this. A lot of people. I, I, I will give you the answer I gave you. Up there. No, no, no. I don't, no. <laughs> You're making me laugh now. Okay. Well, uh, well, we do hope you've woken up well, and uh, today yeah. is going to be a, a wonderful day. Now, um, fuel prices have gone up. In fact, in some places, it's bought as far as high as 700 naira, but uh, officially, so to speak, it's like uh, 617 naira, thereabouts, 650, 617, just fluctuating between those prices. Um, well, let's just take your comments as um, what you think the lifestyle of the people would be now as uh, the fuel prices have gone up and there's a likelihood it will still go up. Well, um Welcome to the new Nigeria is the first thing that I would like to say, you know, to everybody. I mean, this is um, the way it's likely to be for the near future. Um, and I say this because I do not see any type of um, engagement on the part of Nigerians that would make uh, the government to have everything. In the past, you know, um, you wouldn't have this... Uh, quantum of an increase before you would have heard from organized labor, civil society, student groups, professional bodies, and protests and strikes would have been, you know, the song of the day. But we are in a new Nigeria. For some reason, everybody is um, um, uh, approaching the matter from a point of view of helplessness. Um, you know, so it's a new Nigeria, and I think that to address the point that you make about um, adjusting, um, because this is our reality, I think it's important that people begin to think about what they can do uh, to to survive this. Of course, we've we've spoken extensively about the proprietary, uh, you know, the, the the necessity of this decision. It's a completely different conversation, but that decision has been made. And uh, we need to think together on what to do to survive. And you find that uh, people, as usual, as human beings, you, you must survive. So people are already taking measures. Some people have had to leave their jobs because simply because the salaries that they were being paid in, in those jobs no longer covers the transportation costs sufficiently to leave um, enough for other things. You know, transportation costs has risen up to as much as 80% of some people's salaries, 60%, you know, and all of that. And it has, those jobs became unsustainable. So people have had to leave. And you, you and I know um, trekking is no longer an exercise. It's no longer um, a fitness mm. activity for a lot of Nigerians now. You know, people have to trek to work, to and fro. Um, walking distances as much as 15 kilometers, 10 kilometers, um, 20 kilometers both ways every day in the scorching heat sometimes. Um, you know, so those are the adjustments that people are making. And, and I want to suggest that if you, if you own a car, um, aside from the obvious and natural reaction of limiting how often you go out, um, your driving pattern and your driving style might need to change and you know this is a very serious conversation you you could save um as much as 50 percent of your fuel consumption by simply making very minor adjustments to how you drive sudden acceleration sudden braking consumes a lot of fuel um maintaining a steady pace you know through your trip not necessarily not going fast you can go fast without consuming a lot of fuel but just maintaining a steady pace can save you a lot. If you have a car that has an onboard computer that gives you the reading of your fuel consumption, use it. 
make sure that that is what is um, displayed on, on your screen um, as you drive, because it will tell you how many liters per kilometer that you are using. And these things now, <laughs> it's no longer just um, um, a nice gadget to have in your car. It could very well be a survival tool, you know, because it could save you as much as 50,000 naira, maybe even 60, maybe 100,000 naira per month, depending on your on your on your lifestyle and on your movement pattern. So, you know, these are just some little tips. There are so many other things that we need to do just to adjust to these new realities. And like you say, we need to remember that these prices are likely to go up again. You know, once um, the exchange rate settles at um, any at a range that is higher by 50 to 100 naira from what we have today. And once crude oil prices move higher from the $80 thereabouts that we have today, there will be an adjustment again upwards. Um, there's a possibility of an adjustment downwards, but you know uh, your guess is as good as mine as to which one is more likely to happen. And I think it's also important to point out that um, even though the NMPC says that uh, the market have been liberalized and it's market forces that are at play, but you find that prices, pump prices, are still being adjusted at the prompting of the NMPC. We, we have to keep an eye on this. Mm. Something does not add up. We claim that um, um, uh, the oil marketers, whether majors or independents, are the ones that are now importing uh, petroleum products and that prices are being set just by, by the cost that they incur in doing that. And yet it is NMPC that leads the way in establishing price increases. Why? So this is a question that we, we is it because they are for now still the largest importer or are we still in some sort of regulated market, even though we claim that we have deregulated? So there's still a lot of questions that uh, we, we need answers to as we go along this journey. Yeah, well, it, the, the issue of fuel uh, price hike seems to have uh, swallowed the issue of dollars. Uh, just about yesterday or so, uh, we hear that the naira or the dollar sold for about 800 and something naira. Uh, and it fluctuates like that from 750, which is almost like a constant now, to 800 back and forth like that. We're not even looking at the dollar, which also... Because I see that in Nigeria, everything hangs on uh, fuel and the exchange rate. But now fuel is swallowing the dollar. We, don't, we are not talking much about the dollar. Is it that we are comfortable? Or do you think we, it's something that we should keep talking about and you think there is a solution that can come? Well, as far as the value of the Naira is concerned and um, the exchange rate of the Naira to other currencies, especially the U.S., United States dollars. Um, we, we, it's it's a um, it's again you know it's a new journey. We just started this um, to operate this new policy, this new regime, um, and we have to wait to see how the market um, settles. Like you say, right now we have a lot of volatility. Uh, yesterday, uh, the dollar closed at um, eight hundred and sixty naira thereabouts. The day before, it closed at 744 in the official markets, you know. So that, that swing, a 100 naira swing in just a one-day period tells you that volatility is a big problem. Um, it tells you that the market has not settled. It tells you that there's a lot of speculation and there's still a lot of doubt. Um, instructive in all of this is the fact that the unification of the exchange rate, the abolition of the multiple official rates, you know, policy has been in operation now for over a month. So we shouldn't be talking about volatility anymore. You know, the markets are very dynamic and the markets usually would um, settle within a decent amount of time, not months. Um, so this volatility is suggestive that there's a problem in the mechanism and in the mechanics of the market today. I have repeatedly advocated that if you want to float your exchange rate, you must also be willing to remove as many exchange control restrictions that you have in place 
if you flow to exchange rate and you do not remove those restrictions, supply will not match demand and the only way will be up as far as the price or exchange rate is concerned. We have done the one, we have not done the other enough. So we have floated the value of, you know, the, the mechanism for, for determining the value of the Naira against the US dollars. Uh, but the extreme harsh controls that we have had for decades in the um, um, uh, foreign exchange markets have not been lifted. We've done a few. So, for example, the restrictions on the use of local Naira debit cards for international transactions have now been lifted. That restriction was put in place by the former, well, the suspended CBN Governor Godwin Mefiele um, in the early days of the Buhari administration and onwards. The restriction kept getting tighter and tighter until it, it was no longer allowed at all. Um, that restriction has been lifted now, so that's an example of one good uh, response from, you know, from um, uh, uh, the authorities with regards to exchange control. But there are still so many others that need to go in order to encourage the holders of liquidity to bring their monies in, and that has not happened. If we don't do that, then uh, the likely direction of the exchange rate will be up. Okay. Well, uh, we're talking about the poverty that people have been subjected to because of the uh, hike in fuel prices and all that. We're, we're blaming fuel uh, price hike, uh, but the poverty is going round and it's coming from multiple sources and hitting Nigerians really hard. But there is this news. I don't know whether we should be happy about it or be sad about it because we know that the FAAC uh, uh, are going to share the... Uh, 1.959 trillion naira, you know. Uh, this is like, like triple what was shared in June. So the states, the local governments, the federal government, they are going to share this money, 1.959 trillion. And the last time money was shared, it was uh, 786.161 billion naira that was shared in June. So this time around, this is, there is so much money that will be shared by these three tiers of government. Is that something that we are supposed to rejoice over? Do you think that so much money coming to the states will, will cushion the effect of these uh, fuel subsidy removal, will cushion the effects we are facing as Nigerians now because of the price hike in, the, in, the, in fuel? And so many, it will remove some people from poverty that we are crying this morning that people are now falling into. Um, well, <laughs> it's very interesting you know, that you bring this up because I discussed it with a friend yesterday. Um, look, uh, it's important to note, yes, um, the removal of the subsidy will have an impact on the fiscal policy of government and availability of revenues, perhaps, hopefully, and perhaps that may be what we are seeing. However, it is important to note that typically, by pattern, July, if you check the historical records of um, FAC allocation, um, which, you know, usually be published, has been published since the days of um, uh, Minister Ngozi Okonjo-Wela. Um, July has always traditionally, tra traditionally been the highest month. Um, so, for example, whilst um, previous months last year, um, uh, around 700 billion, 600 billion Naira was shared by FAC in July of 2022, FAC that was shared, FAC allocation that was shared um, or disbursed was 1.2 trillion July, <laughs> you know, um, as against 1.01 trillion um, in June of that same year. Uh, so, look, let's not uh, make sensationalize what needs not be sensationalized. We do not know yet what the effect of um, the subsidy removal has been. We know what to expect, but whether what we expect is what we will see, and the impact of what we see eventually, if we do, if we do see it, uh, we do not know what that impact will be until we experience it. 
And I think that the point still needs to be made that as fantastic as it is to create um, this additional revenue buffer for government, the revenue is useless to the people if they do not feel the benefits in their lives as quickly as possible. If their lives as a result of that additional revenue has become significantly harder in a manner that perhaps is avoidable, that is the conversation that I think we need to have. Um, it's very good to increase government revenues because government can then do more, but is this the only way to achieve that? Is there a better way? Is there an easier way? Is there a way to achieve that without um, um, impoverishing, impo imp impoverishing more Nigerians? If you have poverty at, you know, you have already 130 million Nigerians living in multidimensional poverty, um, you have an, uh, um, an un unemployment rate of over 30 percent. If you add underemployment, you're over 50 percent. You know, is this the time? to do this where you then push more people below the poverty line, push more people into the job labor markets, you know, because they simply can't sustain, you know, their jobs and all of that, you know. So I think that that's the conversation to be had. Uh, celebrating an increase in FAC allocation for me now um, um, is, is, is uh, superficial. Okay, uh, while we wrap up, because this actually will be the last question uh, as we wrap up, uh, the, the National Assembly has said that the president should um, lift embargo on unemployment. Do you think this is the solution to the poverty that is ravaging the land now? I mean, that, that's, we're talking about a federal government that pays 30 million as, uh, 30,000 as minimum wage. How can that solve the problem? Um, and plus, how many people can the federal government alone employ? What is the workforce of the federal government? You know, so asking the federal government to lift embargo as a potential solution to what we're experiencing now um, is a moot point. It, 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 it does nothing. We need coherent policy making from government to address the issues that have been created by the policies of the same government. That is what we need at the moment. And right now, I'm afraid we're not seeing enough of that. Even the policy of removing subsidy appears as we have seen with the back and forth and the flip-flopping not to have been um, implemented in a coherent manner and in fact has not been implemented in line with the plan of the government itself you know so that is what we need to speak to um, asking government to lift embargo on unemployment again is very superficial okay we'd like to thank you mr shokuton for coming on the program thank you for your time thanks for having me yeah, we've been talking with Mr. Shegun Shokwiton, Principal Partner, Woodridge and Court Consulting, and we'll, we were talking on the fact that people are falling into poverty because of the, f the hike in the fuel price and so many other issues that are uh, making Nigerians to become poorer and poorer. He proffered some solutions, and we do hope that everybody will be patient enough and will also think outside the box to make sure that you regulate the way you live your life and then you wait for the solutions that may come in a short time or not too uh, long a time in our lives. Let's leave to see that Eldorado for Nigeria, as we are hoping. We'll take a short break. When we return, we'll go to the next hot topic. Stay with us.